What up, people? D Mac in the building. What's up, D Mac? Wait for a few more people to get up here before I uh, start talking. <clears throat> What's up, Edwin? Sidekick, Kirk, what's up? Stanley Parrish, what's up, man? How you doing? Okay, people in the building. Xavier, what up, Tony? You guys, I don't have no no fly girls with me today. I ain't got no photo shoots going on. It's just me and a mic and a dream, okay? Nothing fancy today. <clears throat> what's going on, Eric? What's everybody up to? I, I don't really have, you know, I just wanted to talk, you know. Happy New Year's, J Jimmy. Uh, I don't have any, like, anything pressing to talk about. I just wanted to, like, you know, chat with you guys and get some thoughts out and try to, you know, go over some stuff. Tony said boo. <laughs> yeah, this one is not lit today, Tony. <clears throat> What's up, EW? Team, was it Team X Income? Okay. What's up, Stanley? It's dry today, Stanley. Ain't nothing going on. <clears throat> okay, Max, I'm all right with a donation. I appreciate that. What's up, David? <clears throat> so, anyways, um, what's everybody up to? I'm not, I'm, you know, today was, I'm not doing anything today. I was going to work on a video, uh, but I decided to live stream to get some content out and to just get some thoughts out and talk to to you know YouTube to the folks to the community and kind of let you guys know what's going on give you some updates Mondo said how do you find your models uh, I'll get to that question actually you know I'm gonna write a question down you can't see me can anybody else not see me Um, can anybody else not see me? Questions? Uh, Alicia says she sees me. Okay, so you guys can see me? Mike is from the webcam. Uh, let's see here. Audio. It should be from my. Um, it should be from this thing. Is this better? The the the. Oh, hmm. What's going on here? Actually, let me turn this on. Is this better? No. Is this better? I can't tell if it's a uh... I see you sound fine. Hmm, interesting. Okay, cool. Well, anyways, I'll go on the stream, go on the show. Um, so, yeah, I uh, just wanted to update you guys on what's going on and just get out some random, some random thoughts. First things first, we are doing Ernesto's in the house, first of all. What up, Ernesto? Um... Me and Ernesto are doing a joint workshop in Las Vegas. If you guys haven't heard about it, uh, I did a promotion for it, um, a video, and it's the trailer on my channel. So if you go to my channel page, um, it should be you should see the uh, the promotion, the promo for my uh, YouTube for the Vegas um, shootout. <clears throat> This is looking thin, bro. Nah, that's just, I just got a haircut. That's all that is. 
Um, so yeah, me and Ernesto are teaming up. We're going to be in Vegas. We're going to be doing a joint like photo walk slash workshop. Um, so it's going to be, we're going to have a model bed or two, depending on how many people sign up. And we're going to be teaching, you know, lighting, posing, answering questions, all of that stuff. If you guys just want to hang out, uh, do a portfolio build, um, learn some insight to how I shoot, we're going to be doing all of that. I'm not going to be holding back. I'm going to tell you guys everything I know up to this point in my career, if we have time. So any questions that you may have for me, uh, or if you want to see hands-on how I create or how Ernesto creates images, we'll be focusing on teaching and kind of giving our all at that Vegas thing. And it's my first time doing a, um, a workshop like by myself. I do workshops with Tosh, but like this is my first time like with me being me and Ernesto. Well, I'm still doing it with somebody else, but me being like really, really in charge of like making sure stuff um, works right. Usually when I do the stuff with Tosh, she handles everything and all I gotta do is show up and you know shoot. But now it's a little bit more on my plate. So uh hopefully you guys show up, come through and have a good time. Let me see what else is going on here. Come to Boston. You know, I'm I'm willing to come to anywhere if there's enough interest. So that's how I see, that's how I look at that. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, I'm working on a few videos for the channel. Actually, you know what? I meant to set a timer because I didn't want to be up here all day. So. So I set a max timer for an hour, hour and 30 minutes. So <clears throat> not trying to be up here for three hours, four hours. If the if it dies down, then I'll just get off. But yeah, so that's that. Um, the Vegas update I wanted to let you guys know of. Um, the Godox 8600 Pro. I know you my guys might have seen that. If you guys haven't seen it, yeah, Godox 8600 Pro. I'm actually looking at getting one of those. So I don't have, the only thing I have is a flashpoint, um, the speed light, um, and I have the trigger. And I was going to get an 8600, uh, sorry, 8200, and then, and that was going to be it. But after I did a shoot with Stan and uh, a guy named Leon, I uh, actually won an 8600 now. But now that they've came out, came out with that 8600 Pro, I actually want that. And the reason I would want the Pro is because of the better modern modeling light, the better quality, like the the brighter modern light for for the studio and stuff like that, so I can actually see where the light's falling. Um, and the other reason I would want the eighty six hundred Pro um, is just a better build of the the light. So the be faster recycle, the better modeling lamp, and um, just the look. It just looks really nice. Other than that, like you know. Kirk Torn, Kirk Torn. Anybody else interested in that 8600 Pro or thinking they might upgrade? Sorry, I'm getting distracted by stuff on my thing too. Terrence, you like that uh, 8600 Pro? James Nguyen said, how's the photo challenge going? It's going good. Uh, at a room. Stanley said, wait a second. Sorry, guys. I'm all over the place. Uh, <clears throat> how's the photo challenge going? The photo challenge is going great. I got a lot of entries. I don't know if it's, it's because my channel's getting popular, or you just guys like this shoot better, or more people are trying to you know participate. But I got a lot. I got way more entries for this editing challenge than the last two. Probably the last two combined. The last one was actually quite a bit. The first one was like okay, um, but I'm getting a lot of emails 
uh, for people who provided some really good edits. I will say one thing I want to do this year is get better at retouching and editing in general. Um, so somebody asked, why don't I make a video about how I edit? I do. I it's not much to how I edit. Like if you actually look at if you look at my deconstructed video, and I did a video, a live stream video on editing the subscribers' photos. That's how I edit for the most part. There's not much secret to uh, my sauce. Most of my work for me is done in camera, and I'm, I, the people who've been around me. If you if you really look at my photos, if you look at the before and after, you can see that like there's not much of a difference from my before and my after photos besides me clicking a preset and maybe adjusting some contrast, but I don't do a whole lot of retouching. So in 2018, in 2018, I want to get better at retouching uh, photos. That's one of my goals for this year, is get better at retouching and um, become a better editor, because I want to add a little more pizzazz to my edits. That's the only thing I feel like I'm missing. Um, and I want to do better. I want to, I want to give... Jeez, what is the word? I want to create better shoots. Um, for me, and I'll go off a little tangent. For me, and my philosophy is, a wise man once said, well, he's not that wise. Uh, <clears throat> better ingredients equals better pizza, okay? So if you apply that to photography, um, the better elements that you have going into the photo, the better your outcome. So for me, a lot of times, I'm very like last minute, spur of the moment, just kind of fly by the seat of my pants. So um, I know kind of what I want to look for in photos and what I don't want, but I want to be better at styling photos and, and hair and makeup on deck and stuff like that. A lot of times I depend on the makeup, the, the model to have like their makeup done good and come really good outfits. Um, but I want to do at least one shoot where, like, it's styled, like, you know, really nice and head to toe. I plan out the locations. You know, I'm, I'm making sure I have ideas and then come with, like, some really, really good photo shoots. So uh, that's my, uh, that's my, that's my, one of my hopes for the years. Overall, at least do one shoot that's, like, on a higher level, like, a, up, up the level of my shooting and not just, like, you know, hokey dokes like oh what you doing because for me like typically what would happen is i might you know text i might be bored and be like hey what you doing you want to come out and shoot okay cool let's pick out a look and then it just happens so i'm going to be better about planning it and, and, and coming up with better themes for my shoot so that overall i end up with a uh i end up with better quality outcome and i i would i would in what's the word I would encourage you all to do that too. Like if you're learning or if you're trying to shoot, um, if you if your model looks better, it feels better, the entire outcome outcome will be better. <clears throat> like your shoots will just be better overall in general. So that's that. That's you know one of the things. And I'm I'm gonna get back to your questions. Actually, I should write down these questions. Somebody asks, how do you find the models? And I think I might take you guys through one of my Instagram DMs and show you how I talk to people on DM. What's up, Dave? Somebody said, oh, somebody asked about Taj. Taj isn't on the channel. Well, she does make appearances. She's on a few videos, so I don't know. Okay. Somebody said, did I keep DA50? No, I didn't keep the DA50. And I'll get into that. <clears throat> okay, cool. So making sure I just didn't miss any pressing questions. Thank you for the don don donation, Maxine. Appreciate that a lot. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so <clears throat> we talked about the 8600 Pro. That's on my list. Now, don't be surprised if you don't see it until Christmas time. Like, um, you may not even see it at all. I might get that 8600 and be just fine. But, uh, sorry, 8200. Uh, but my plan is to get the 200 first and then eventually upgrade to the 600 because the more I shoot in my studio, the more I want to do more studio shoots. My channel started off as 
uh, a natural light slash flash. Okay, it's funny, guys. I'm I'm all over the place. Okay, bear with me. It's funny because <clears throat> my very first shoot was a natural light shoot, and in my second or third shoot of my channel, I used off camera flash because I didn't want my channel to be natural light only. I know how to use off camera flash. I know how to light photos. Um, I'm not the best at it, but I know how to do it. So I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to come across as this, another natural light only channel or somebody who didn't know what they were doing. So I made an effort to introduce lighting early into my channel. Although I do a lot of natural light photo shoots in the summertime because it's easy. It doesn't require much work. I can just pick up a camera and go and make a video as opposed to bringing lights and stands and all of this stuff and setting up. I can't. It's just way more invested. So, um, and I'm very good at like natural light. And so. Um, and that's you know that seems to be a very popular topic for YouTube search in general. Like that makes for very good evergreen content. You guys, if you're looking to make a channel and you want to know what kind of videos to make, a natural light tutorial, a good one, um, will go far and it'll keep your channel relevant. So that's one piece of advice: is make a really good natural light tutorial video and then update it. Like make another one. The very first video I made was a natural light tutorial, and then I made a a, ver a second version, a version two which did even better so and you guys have probably seen it um, so yeah that's that but um, back to what I was saying the more I shoot in my little studio downstairs the more I enjoy making like uh, studio style images and so I want to get more into it so now I want to increase or I want to invest in more um, strobes and monolights and stuff like that so <clears throat> hold on a second opening up the door so yeah so that's my plans for uh, the future is to invest in more lighting gear lighting equipment so I can do more shoots of course I borrow a lot of stuff so Stan up here Stanley Morris he always comes through he has a bunch of gear he lets me borrow uh, for shoots um, guy who lives down the street from me his name is Rick he lets me borrow stuff so I very much depend on friends and, and family for help like I'm not somebody who's gonna act like I have it all I don't have a lot of equipment. I have enough, um, but I have a lot of stuff that I want to do. So I just ask people for help. You know, somebody said, "Do you shoot models for free?" I will get to that. Long story short, yes. Shoot models for free because I want to kind of stay on track. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so that's that. I want to do more studio shoots. I want to get a pro. I want to get an 8200. I'll probably get like two 200s and one pro. Like, I guess my perfect like setup would be two 8200s and one 600. Because I think that's probably all I would need. And then some flashes for the rest of the stuff. <clears throat> um... D850 worth the money. Okay, I'll write that down. <laughs> Long story short, yes. All right, so somebody said, um, I'll get to the find the model question later. Somebody said, how come Tosh isn't on the channel? She is on the channel. Um, I, so we, sh you know, we own the business together. We both shoot together. So she usually appears when we're doing a like, um, if I'm live streaming an actual senior shoot, um, or maybe in the future if I live stream a family session. I haven't done that yet, but I may do that in the future. Live stream a family session. Um, YouTube's not her thing. She's usually not, you know, anxious to jump on camera if she's not dressed and impressed. And so uh, a lot of it involves that. It's just having to plan out. I actually asked her. If we would do like a business live stream talk, so I, that might be in the works in the future of us doing like a combination, like talk about you know booking customers, clients, business and stuff. Because um, she runs most of the business from the business aspect, from booking, like booking, scheduling, all that stuff. She does that. I do the shootings and the weddings. Um, yeah, but if you look at a few of the videos, like my um, high school senior videos. Anything involving a high school scene, you're going to see Tosh. So if you look through my channel, she's there. And then she actually made a guest appearance on Ernesto's live stream. So if you go to Ernesto's live stream and you look up the business talk that I did, uh, she she made an appearance. 
on the channel and then she answered the pressing question. People always ask like, how does your wife feel about you shooting these women? So I asked her, she she said how she felt. Um, if you guys missed it or wanted the long story short, long story short, um, she doesn't care. Like she doesn't mind my shoes. She doesn't, she's not tripping. Like it's my job. So it's what we do anyway. Uh, her only pushback would be that she doesn't want me to shoot the high school seniors in the street team. So for her, like a shoot with uh, Rachel uh, would be fine, like a by Rachel or the one I did with, um, what's the girl downstairs? Ashley Mack. Like she doesn't care about that stuff. For her, she wouldn't want me to shoot somebody like uh, a Michaela. I don't know if you saw Michaela. She's been on the channel before. <clears throat> because for her, it's a branding thing. So the Eikentosh brand represents a particular set of images, a particular style of imagery. And is associated with a certain group of people. Whereas the Photo Me Ike, this YouTube channel, and these images and these visuals that I create are separate from the Eikentosh brand. So in order to keep from having the things cross and people be confused, she'd rather me shoot people who aren't associated with the Eikentosh brand, which is totally fine. I get that. And so I understand that. So um, that would be my focus is trying to book models and people who aren't associated. Now, it's, I have to work a little bit harder because a lot of times I shoot a lot of the girls and people who, who are associated with us. Um, now I just have to reach out to stranger, stranger random people to actually shoot, so <clears throat> yeah. See, Tosh, uh, see what everybody's saying. Minota for life in the building. What's up, Minota? Tosh is a girl. She's a WPI girl. She totally subs the style. LOL. He's funny. Well, tell you, Tosh. Um, Tosh. Um, she went to South and Cotters. Uh, platform class at WPPI like way back when we when we went the first year in 2011 Tosh went to South and College WPPI so we know him we, we met him a long time ago <clears throat> uh, let's see what else here and he would say hey me and another photographer both have studios both have high-end equipment and pushing promo but lack engagement and bookings any advice um, I kind of talked about this on Ernesto's channel in a production um, Having the, for me, having all the equipment is fine. I think for you, if you're pushing promo, I think it depends on who you're pushing promo to and where you're pushing the promo. You know, it's funny. I had the, uh, I had this realization, right? So I remember um, early in the career, like years ago, I wanted to like get a lot of, so I live in the Pacific Northwest, as you guys may know. And the black community here is very small. It's a very diverse state. Washington, especially Western Washington, is super diverse. Um, as far as black people are, or co people of color, it's very, 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 very small community of people of color. And so as a person of color who does photography, um, you would think, oh, I would want to shoot all of the people. Or the people of color who want good photography would obviously come to myself and my wife because we take great photos there aren't that many photographers of color who are doing great work. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, I should reach out to every person of color and get all of it in the book. And so I remember I used to go to this barbershop and um, I would go to the barbershop and be like, oh, wow, I should market to these people here. I should bring these business cards to these people here. And then I came to the realization that I was like, you know what? I actually don't want these people here to book me because A, they probably can't afford the prices that I'm trying to charge. And B, um, because they wouldn't be able to afford the, they couldn't afford my prices, they wouldn't look and they wouldn't represent the brand in a certain way. I guess they have, they, there's this thing called your ideal client. And these folks that came to my, good people, friends, you know, I love them, but I don't know if they were my ideal client, if that's, you know, if you don't understand what I'm coming for. I was looking for my like more upscale People who dress well, drove nice cars, who had money to spend on, you know, large prints. If I told them, like, a digital file is $75 per image, they wouldn't trip. They'd be like, okay, great, let me get the whole set. Whereas these people at the barbershop that I saw, if I tell them the shoot is $250 just for the shoot, they look at me like I'm crazy. So I, I just say, you know what, I'm not even going to waste my time marketing here. I'm going to find a different place. And where you pr push promo to... 
matters because if you're pushing promo to the wrong area of people and you're trying to charge them a certain amount of money that doesn't fit within their range. Um, no, wait. I'm, I'm looking at Stan's quote. Because um, you're not in their range, it can be it can be a setup for failure. So I think that how you promo and where you promo matters. And I would also like do some shoots. Like I would get some... I don't know what kind of photography you're doing. I guess I don't have enough information. Like what is... What is a studio? Like, in a production, if you're here, if you're listening, what kind of studio do you, like, have? Like, what is it? What's going on? What's the, what's the deal? Help me understand. <clears throat> Not to be free, so how'd you get started uh, getting people to do senior pictures? I'll get to that. Did you start senior... Photos. Okay, so let me get to some earlier questions here. Um, <clears throat> so I answered the Tasha not on the channel part. She is on the channel. She just doesn't like jumping in front of the camera like I do for no reason. Um, do I shoot? Oh, do I shoot models for free? For YouTube, yes. Nine out of ten shoots that I do for YouTube are free. If you saw that shoot that I did with Rachel where she gave me $100 at the end, that was totally unexpected. So, like, I was like, yo, I just want, I just need to make content. Um, if I charged everybody that I shot, I wouldn't be able to make as, much, as many videos because there's, out here, you know, we shoot on location. We don't own a studio. So, if I want to shoot, like, on the rainy days, I wouldn't get any, like, during this time of the year where it's cold outside, it'd be slow. It'd be pretty slow. My channel would be dry as I don't know what. So, in order for me to get experience, get practice... Um, and just make content for the channel, it's time for prints. So most of the people that you see on my channel are time for print shoes. Um, and that's how that works. Uh, yeah, so like, for example, like a Rachel was like, oh, here, let me let me hit you off with some money. If people, if people inquire, if they say, hey, can I book a shoot with you? How much? I'll tell them my prices, and I still made video to shoot anyway. But most of the shoes that you see are free. Ashley Mac, downstairs that was free. I just need to create content from YouTube, and that's how I grow my channel. And so, and I don't mind doing it because I get paid by other people, so it's not like I'm shooting everybody for free. All my weddings, you know, I get paid for the weddings. The senior photos that I live stream, those are paid shoots. Um, so, not everybody's free, but most of them are free, and that's totally fine with me because that gives me a chance to create like what I want to create. And that's another thing about shooting for free. When I shoot people for free, I have more control over the shoot. When people are paying for the shoot, then they have more control over the look. So let's say Ashley Mack, I can say, bring that black dress and bring the white dress. Or bring this, don't bring that. If she's paying me, she has control over what she wears. And so I have to meet her needs as opposed to her meeting my needs. So, <clears throat> so that's that. I do shoot. Models for free on this channel all the time. Uh, oh, how do I find models? I just need to get back to that. So I said, is the DA50 worth the money? Yes, it is. Long story short. It's a great camera. I love it. I don't have the money to go out and buy a D850 without ramifications. Um, so I don't have one yet. But if I could, I would. But even at, even in the same at the same time, like... I don't need a D850. The D750 works just fine. My only complaint with my D, my only complaint with the D800 is that it's a bit slow, um, and the focus can be off. But all of those were fixed with the D810. So really, at this point, I would upgrade from a D D800 to a D850, just out of logical. It makes sense to just upgrade to something that's a better camera. Um, but the D600 works fine. In fact. When I live streamed the shoot with Ashley Mack downstairs, I was shooting with the D800. I actually would rather have used my D750, but the reason I used the D800 is because the tether, the cord that I had, the USB cable, was longer. So I was able to tether with the D800 better than I would be if I used the D850. Um, but I had rather, I would rather have shot in those images with the D750 because the D750 would have been sharper. The images would have been sharper out of camera. And I could have relied on the focus a lot more. 
The D750 is a great camera. It, the autofocus works perfect on it. Same thing with the D850. So <clears throat> it's worth the money. Somebody said, um, "How do you start? How did you start shooting some new photos?" To make a long story short, um, we started booking friends and family. For senior pictures, like we just friends who had kids in high school, we would book them and then get them and get like a basically we built a portfolio of kids around the high school senior age and then we put out a call for a bunch of kids to represent our brand. It's like a senior model program. Um, and me and Tosh, we teach on that. So if you want more information on that, you can go to my website, ikantosh.com, and there's a four photographers link for like um, how to build a senior model program, but that's how we built our senior model. That's how we got seniors to shoot with us. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Like basically uh, build a portfolio first and then start reaching out to schools or parents and for kids. Oh, you know what? Here's, here's a quick tip. This is something you could do like tomorrow. So you could offer to shoot a kid for free. Say, hey, I'll shoot you for free. But if you want the images... If you can get another kid to book pictures with me and pay, I'll give you the photos for free or else they got to pay. And that gives them the incentive to try to find somebody else to book with you um, so that they can get their images for free. And you can do that with like two or three kids and two or three schools, like shoot like two kids from two schools, either two different schools or the same schools and say, hey, I'll do your shoot for free. If you can get some other kids to book me. I'll give you the, the photos for free or you can pay. And so that's kind of like, that's something I would do tomorrow. Like, hey, like a um, <clears throat> like a trade. So hopefully that answered your question. How do you start shooting senior photos? Somebody said, how do you find your models? Okay, so how do I find my models? And I, and I may make an actual video about this, like an actual YouTube video kind of explaining how I find models. But in short, Instagram. Instagram is the new model mayhem. People talked about like people talk about how model mayhem is crazy, which is um, which is it is crazy, and you you never know what you're gonna get with model mayhem. You never know what you're gonna get with Instagram, but with Instagram, especially with females, like they're always trying to you know have pictures for the gram, um, and create content. And so I always I just DM people. I just you know I send eye emojis. And say, hey, you trying to shoot? Like I do. I think let me try to find a conversation and pull up an actual real conversation that I had with a model with you guys. <clears throat> Give me a second. No, I don't want to do that one. Then. She might be the other one. Okay, great. This is a good one. All right, so I'm going to send these <laughs> Stanley. Stanley knows because I, I show Stanley some of my DMs because I get some wild, crazy, you know, it sometimes it just be like, uh, yikes. <clears throat> but yeah, D I just DM people. Oh, you know what? I should show you guys I should show you guys the stuff that made it and the stuff that didn't make it. <laughs> I should show you like stuff I send to people and I get no response. Cause it happens to me too. Let me actually find this one. Let me see what happens here. Hmm. Oh, here's one. And, uh, trying to get y'all the good stuff. <laughs> I'm laughing now because this stuff is funny. 
I'm about to expose myself. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> okay, go back here. Let me see here. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, let me try to send these uh, to my computer, guys and girls. How you doing, B. Christine? What's up? Now, let me see if AirDrop works on my computer. <clears throat> Give me a second. <clears throat> While well, I'm trying to get this um, situated, I'll answer some other questions. Let me actually scroll back through. You guys can see what I'm doing. Um, like iTunes library. Great. Let's get out of here. What did I miss so far? Cancel. Peace and blessings, blah, blah, blah. Torn between. Oh, I'm torn between D810 and D750, pretty much the same price. A7R3 and D850, a few years away right now. Married life, yeah. You know what? Between the D850, the D810, and the D750, that's tough. Um, if somebody gave me both cameras, I'd have a hard time picking one over the other, really, because they both, they're just two different cameras for two different reasons. Um, if I had to go shoot a wedding, I would choose the D750 in a heartbeat, because the reason I would, for, for weddings and events, I would go do it D, D750, because the D750 is a little bit lighter, um, and very good at high ISOs, it's 24 megapixels, so you have to deal with, like, you know, killing your hard drive, with 36 megapixel file, so um, it's sharp. So that's why I would choose D750 for events and weddings, and that's what I do for portraits. Like if you did family portraits, senior portraits, anything porturey headshots, I would go D810 all day because um, 36 megapixels is worth it. Like it's just the the higher megapixel. I like the build quality of the D810, um, and I like I like bigger, better, like robust cameras. The only thing is that, like, if I'm shooting an eight-hour wedding, I might prefer something a little bit lighter uh, for a full day. But if I'm just doing a quick shoot, I actually do want, like, a bigger, better camera for, like, quick hour, two-hour portrait session. So that's my thoughts on D750 versus D810. <clears throat> A7R2 looks great. I'm sorry, A7R3 looks great. But um, you guys, if you guys have listened, you've heard my beef with Sony is that the cameras are so small. And, um... There's just a few things that I nitpick about with the Sony's. So. so I'm still waiting for Canon. Sorry, I'm waiting for Nikon to come up with some kind of mirrorless uh, situation. <clears throat> Alan said he's dumping the D750 for the A7R3. So he's, he's switching to Sony. I think said D750 is 24 is better than... Oh, yeah, yeah. Minota saw my test. I did a test for 24 megapixels. D750 versus the D850 is 24. Yeah, the the D750 is much better, has a much better, is way better than the D850's medium raw because it's just like a, it's like a, 
it's a compromise. Um, but yeah. Somebody said, uh, hey, I, what do you think is the best all-around lens for shooting events and portraits? <clears throat> Those are two totally different things, but if you, the 24 to 70, that's mine. That's the best all-around lens uh, is 24 to 70. Because you for events, you have a wide range of zooms, and for portraits, you have a wide range of zooms. So, yeah. If you ask me what I like to shoot, it's the 35 to 15 to 85 prime. Um, so, I'm trying to get my phone to connect, actually. Give me a second here. Yeah. Too smart, no problem. What's up, Charles? What's going on, man? Ha, uh, you see you're waiting for Canon, just joke, yeah. Uh yeah, I'm waiting for Nikon or Canon or somebody to come out with a mirrorless. Just because I wanna see what they're doing. Like I'm not I'm not somebody who who believes or thinks that like Canon or Nikon aren't gonna make a mirrorless. Like they are, they're slow. Nikon is if if you know history of cameras and especially with Nikon, Nikon is notoriously slow for coming out with new like updates to their stuff, but when they do, it's amazing. It's just you have to suffer for like a while before Nikon catches up. But once they do catch up, it, it's worth the wait. And so, I don't. There's nothing. Um, there's nothing that the Sony's can do, or that any other camera can do that I need right now. And, um, and that's the thing. Keep that in mind. Need like Tony just said, Nikon. He's in, I have I invested a lot emotionally into Nikon and glass wise, and so I don't want to just switch like that. Um, like most people want to switch, and then also like when I go out and do a portrait session, like I don't I I I make you guys see my channel. I make great images. I make great work. There's nothing that like that's prohibiting me from creating great images. If if my Nikons were like holding me back from creating great pictures, of course I'd want to switch. I'm like, you know what? I'm not able to create the kind of work I want to create. Sony is putting out stuff that makes me that allows me to create the kind of images that I wouldn't dream. Like there's nothing like that. So because that doesn't exist, I'm okay with keeping my Nikon gear and shooting a DSLR. What I like are I autofocus and the autofocusing system of the Sony's, of course I would. But and I don't know if it's worth me, you know, selling all my gear and you know and, and starting over and buying thousands of dollars worth of glass just for eye autofocus or for autofocusing system when Nikon already has cameras that have really great focusing systems. Like it's just for me it's just like if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess, for lack of a better term. <clears throat> now if I was somebody who's starting from scratch like if I had no no nothing invested, if I said if, if somebody said, "Hey, I'm looking to buy a camera," I you know I couldn't argue. I'd be like, you know, Sony's a great option if you're starting from fresh, from scratch. Sony probably would be the way to go if you had no no nothing invested. But if you if you're already invested years into Canon or Nikon, like I don't I don't know if there's you know unless you just feel like I can't create better images, I, I need Sony to create better images. By all means, like do what you got to do. I ain't a hater, you know. I just, you know, I have my, uh, I have my preferences. <clears throat> I'm trying to get this, uh, somebody said, uh, if Canon drops a mirror system first, will you sell all that stuff? I don't know. I, I, I wait. You know what? Here's my here's my thing. Uh, Stanley asked. Um, oh, he said I'm answering. Okay, can you? And that's an that's another thing. Like for me, it's just how the Sony's work. Um, 
like if Canon was like, oh, we dropped the mirrorless system and it works with all of our glass that we already have. Oh, the Canon glass that they already have in the Tamrons and all that stuff, like the third party support is there. Like it's just so much, so many lenses. My hope and dream is that Nikon's like, oh, we're going to drop a mirrorless system and you can use all of the old Nikon glass. You know, I, will, I, would, I would purchase that in a heartbeat. I'd be like one of the first people in line if I had the money. Now, come 2019, if it ain't looking too bright, hey, I'm going to have to make some changes. And even still, for me, ergonomics is a thing too. So I might like, if Canon comes out with a, a mirrorless system that's on par with Sony system or just as good, I might look into the Canon systems if I like the way the Canon system feels, if I like the feel of the Canon system. But um, I can't, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not jumping on any bandwagons. Okay, cool. I think I got it. <clears throat> All right, give me a second, guys. Give me a second. Bear with me. I'm trying to get my DMs up here. And I'm going to crop out the names because in case I, you know, want to do a shoot with them later, I would rather, I would rather save who I'm shooting um, as a surprise. So. so I'm just cropping out the names. Okay, so I got it. A right to privacy council. Yeah, that too. <clears throat> Cause I don't want you guys like spamming my models. <laughs> hey, hey, are you gonna shoot with photo me eye? Like uh Alright, so I'm gonna switch my screens here. Okay, so you guys should be able to see the screen, all right? So this is my phone. This is a message. This is a DM that I sent uh, somebody yesterday. It says today. Was it? Uh, no, it's yesterday. So my first, because what I do is I, I'm, I, I'll be on Instagram and um, I'll message people. And I'm like, you know, I just find random girls who know somebody that I know or, you know, have seen my work or just random people you you never know i'll go through it so this one this is my exact message to them hey are you modeling or not and this is just me being funny 
because you'll be awesome in front of my lens one day. At least I think you would. Blah, blah, blah. OMG, I would love to. Right here means I got the green light. So I already got it. We're straight. Done. And then this is just the rest. Let me know when it's a good time for you. Talking about Sammy. So she's a friend of another female, another girl who I know who was actually on the street team um, a year ago, a year or two ago. So um, she knows a friend. She's a friend of a friend. So there's some kind of connection. She knows me or knows of me. So she had already been thinking about shooting with me, but I just happened to reach out to her because I saw her on another friend's post. So this was me reaching out to her based on the fact that I saw her and I was like, oh, she'd be cute for a shoot. Really flattered, you know, let me know when it's a good time for you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yada, yada, yada. What helps is if you have sign ideas because that helps inspire me. Yes, please. I also like okay. And so, if me, this question is let me know what kind of stuff you're into. Because, like, if she's into sports and fitness and I want to do a fashion shoot, it's a mismatch. Um, if she's into, like, um, you know, whimsical dresses and flimsy stuff, and I'm like, oh, let's do a boudoir shoot, it's a mismatch. So, that's, you know, that's why I say, what are you into? Um, this one. I said, I, I think I like, com I think she follows me on, she followed me on Instagram and I sent her a DM saying she's amazing. She says, thank you, love your work, let you. Oh, wow, I'm flattered, blah, blah, blah. I don't have any ideas to suck. I'll be honored. If you come up with any cool ideas, let me know. I run a YouTube channel and a business. So this is me letting her know um, what I do, what I'm about. Um, <clears throat> And where I'm coming from. Thank you, all available weekends. So this is how I message. This is how I get here. So we haven't shot yet, but this, we will shoot in the future. So that's that. Um, this is me messaging a model, trying to like get some attention. It didn't work. I got left on red, as you can see. So sometimes I get left on red, guys. It happens to the best of us. They just look at you like you're crazy. So yeah. Oh, and this one was another one. Hey, would you ever be down to do a collab? AKA, let me shoot you. Just figured I'd ask. No response. I replied to another story. No response. Oh, actually, you know what? This this was this wasn't a reply. This was um. Oops. This was a while ago. B before and then she had did a story. I think she was with a friend, and I had asked her about her friend. And then she said, OMG, just saw your DM would love to be, um, would be so down. And that's one of my besties, Sonora. Love her. She's only ever done portrait session with me. So she may be down. So I had forgot that I had sent her that DM like a while ago to, to do a collab. Because this was like a while ago. So um, me and her got some stuff, you know, coming up in the future at some point in time. And that's it. <clears throat> Exit this out. So hopefully that gives you guys some insight to my like what I do. I basically just DM people on Instagram saying, "Hey, um, I would love to you know do a shoot with you. Are you down?" And sometimes I get people messaging me to do shoots, so it, it, it goes both ways. So hopefully that answered your question of how I get models. They're always either people that I know. People who are friends of people that I know, and also what helps I think what helps me is my my page is like I have a I have good work on my page, so if I'm if I reach out to somebody to shoot, they're more I they're more liable to shoot with me because I have a good quality feed of work. My work is um is good, you know. Uh, Stanley said, "Did 2020? Nope, Stanley. I got left on red. <laughs> I re you guys. I reached out to this guy. His his he's he's called 2020 Photography on Instagram, and I was like, yo, I would love to do a collab for YouTube. Like, I was I was trying to get him to do a video like I did with Augustina, where like he does a shoot and I kind of record it and kind of you know get some insight from how he works. Um, but he he didn't respond. I don't know if he even read the message." 
He finally, like, who is this guy? And next. <laughs> if a model messages you first, do you charge them? Um, you know, that's a good question. It depends on if I, again, my motivation is to create content for YouTube. Let's be clear. The only reason I do these shoots is for YouTube. For, to, make, to make YouTube videos or to practice for a YouTube video. Um, that's my only motivation. If I, if I quit YouTube tomorrow, I'm not shooting these people. I'm just going back to shooting to my regular business. Because um, for me personally, uh, I'm not interested in, cre in, cre in doing all this work to create photos for just Instagram. I think some people's motivation may be like they want to be some kind of big time fashion photographer. So they're working to get noticed so they can get gigs for fashion agencies. Or um, he says I'm reaching 2020 yet. Yeah. He's dope. 2020 photography on uh, YouTube, on uh, Instagram. Yeah, but some people's like motivations or aspirations are to be noticed on Instagram. I don't, I'm not looking to be noticed on Instagram. I'm just sharing the work that I create. Uh, and so for me, YouTube gives me an excuse to explore different concepts and different shooting techniques and ideas and just do shoots that I probably wanted to do, but no, have, nobody has paid me to do. Um, kind of like a personal project. And they say that like, you know, photographers should have personal projects that they do um, to kind of keep them sharp and keep them artistically sound, which is fine and all. But for me, that's like maybe one shoot, maybe two. I'm doing multiple shoots all the time. So I have to have some kind of motivation. Uh, I have to have some kind of motivation to do these shoots, to shoot these people. So without trying to be long winded, um, if a person reaches out to me for a photo shoot, if I like their look and I, and I want to guarantee that I want, that I want them to shoot with me and I want to do the video, uh, if I'm like, oh, let's say Rachel, for example, let's say I met by Rachel in the gym or something or she randomly messaged me on Instagram and said, hey, let's do a shoot. Like, can I work with you? I'd be like, oh, great. You'd be perfect for this shoot that I want to do for YouTube. No charge. Just look this way for me. Because, again, remember, when I do shoots for free, I have control over the shoot. If they want control, then, you know, they got to put up some money. So, for me, I'm like, okay, great. I'll shoot you for free because this is what I want from you. And you would be perfect for my plan. Um, if I'm not as interested in the model... Then I'm like, oh, yeah, well, if you book a shoot, that's when I throw up my rates. That's when I charge people if I'm not quite as uh, into the person. Or I just won't shoot. If people are like they want to shoot for free, I'll be like, yeah, one day. And it might take a year or two for me to get back to them just because. And that's called a soft curve. Like I'm like, you know what? Um, let me get back to you. Um, it may sound shallow or whatever, but it is what it is. Like I, I have an agenda for who I want to shoot and how I want them to look and the qualities I look for in my models. So um, if you don't fit that, that, uh, what is the term? If you don't fit the uh, <clears throat> specifications that I'm looking for, then I, I can't shoot you for free because I'm shooting YouTube models for free just to kind of create YouTube content. Photo Latvia says, what up, Photo Latvia? I appreciate you commenting on my videos and stuff. I recognize you. Do you offer the models a choice of shots from your session? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I let them choose the pictures. They can have the photos edited, unedited. I don't care what they do with the pictures. Again, this stuff is all for YouTube. Like, the shot with Ashley Mack downstairs when I shot with the ring light, that was me just trying to test a different lighting scenario for YouTube content. So I'm like, yo, pick out this and pick out that and come through and let's do a shoot like that's that's totally how we put that together <clears throat> and many RTs yeah see it but yeah I it's many is like yeah create content for YouTube now nah, yeah I'm not like it because photography is my full-time job I already get paid to shoot. Like, if you want to be a photographer full time, and you want to do like, you know, um, you know, if you just want to shoot people full time, I'm okay shooting weddings and families and high school seniors full time. That's it. 
So I don't have a need to be discovered because I'm already getting booked for jobs. So with that being said, I have no interest in doing pictures for fun because I'm 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 good. I get I'm I'm getting booked for work. Like I pay the bills with photography. So D Mac, have you ever abruptly ended a shoot? Um I can't think of not really. Not really, no. Like I, I may, I may have ran out of time. Like if I ran out of time, I ended the shoot. But I've never just like said stop. Let's. I, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't see any reason to do that. David Robot says, "What microphone are you using?" It's like his. I think I'm using this one, but it might be coming from my uh, my Logitech. My Logitech, this one. Yeah, it's coming from my Logitech um, camera. I had this one set up, and I set the settings. I'm gonna have to restart. I don't want to re restart the stream now, cause then let me try and undo it. Yeah, I'm not sure like if it's if the my my microphone's not working or what's going on. <clears throat> but I'm trying to get this audio thing together. So yeah, back to QA. How do you come up with your prices for shoots? Good question. Just saw his huge ego. He ain't about no relationship type stuff. My boy just texted me, LOL, not too friendly. Oh. Hot takes. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's talking about 2020. Yeah. And <clears throat> you know, I tried. You know, I look, I'm no, I'm nobody big. I'm, no, I'm not anybody who's major. So I am still willing to humble myself to ask people for collabs. You know, say hey, I'm I, I enjoy your work. Like, I'm not above anybody. No, none of you guys or anybody. No, I don't I don't see myself above anybody in any kind of way. So, how long do you shoot a line that's not giving you what you want before you just call last frame? Oh, Floyd, that's a good question. How long do you shoot a model that's not giving you what you want before you call the last frame? Um, if I can't get anything out of the model, uh, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour. See, here's the thing about shoots. It's when you first meet somebody for the first time, it's always like awkward the first like 30, 20 to 30 minutes. So the first 20 to 30 minutes into the shoot is just awkwardness. So I'm like, I, I, I'll, I'll give it to that. If 30 more minutes in, if the shoot's just not going well, I'm like, yo, I think we got everything we need. So, uh, yeah. Any other ideas? Anything else you need before we leave? If not, then that that's it. And usually at that time, usually I'm, I'm getting paid, you know, to be there. So, But I haven't run into any issues yet. I usually try to work. I usually try to work. Because here's the deal. If I agree to shoot somebody, especially for free, there's something I, I saw that is there that I should be able to pull out just based on the picture that I've seen. So my job is to try to work to get that out of them, and I'm, you know, and I'll try my hardest. If I can't get that, then I, you know, I'll, I'll throw in the towel. Um, but there has to be something there for me to even want to shoot you, especially if I'm shooting you for a YouTube video for free. So. Reading comments. How long do you yeah, have? Is having a studio worth it? <clears throat> I live on the East Coast, cold weather, four months a year. Um, you know what? Too too smart, too smart. Um, <clears throat> I think so. It depends. Again, it depends on your style. 
for me, for my business, no, it's not worth it for my business. For my YouTube channel, yeah, it's actually kind of cool because I get to still create content. I'm not stuck not being able to shoot. Now that I have my downstairs basement studio, if I need to do a shoot, I can just break out some lights and create some content that way as opposed to waiting for it to, the sun to come out and do some natural light work outdoors. So for me, my little downstairs basement or being able to use the studio still allows me to be able to shoot. Um, but from for my business, from my from my business perspective, it's not so much worth it because we don't we typically shoot on location. Uh, we don't do any corporate headshots. It's like senior photos, weddings, family pictures, all that stuff happens outdoors. So <clears throat> business wise, it's not worth it for me. But for my YouTube channel, it is, and I do you know want to keep doing studio stuff. Any tips for beginners? Um, beginners in what? Have you ever considered the Magmot system? Not to be free, you might be new to the channel, but I do use Magmods a lot in my videos. Um, the Magmod uh, spear right here, actually. And what else? Yeah, I I have I have I have everything Magmod except for um, uh, except for the snoot. <clears throat> I actually did a video. I did a I did two videos on the mag beam. I had one creative lighting techniques with the mag beam and um the one where I shot a girl off of the street. This is another thing. I would I would encourage you guys to like look through my channel and look through my videos because um I get a lot of questions about stuff that like I've answered in a previous video or made a video about. So um if you're like new to the channel within the last six months there's a whole year's worth of videos that, that I made for content that might interest you. So, <clears throat> You ever have a bridezilla? Kind of, sort of. A long time ago I did, you know, too. 50 versus 85 for portraits. 85 for portraits all day. If I only had one, if I could only pick one, I would choose a 50. But uh, if, I, if I have both, I switch between them. If the shot is okay, wait, if the shoot is okay, one hour max. If it's going good, two hours worth with clothing changes. Tony, go. Yeah. Tony, um, yeah, if the shoot is garbage, like if I'm, if it's just not, this, the chemistry's not there, it'll be done within 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but if it's going good and I want to still get more photos, it, it, it'll go for a while. Because <clears throat> you just get happy, you want to keep creating, you keep getting good looks, and it's just like... You just get into the shoot, and you lose track of time, like how I lose track of these live streams. <clears throat> how it takes me to say studios worth it if you charge in twenty five hundred to forty five, like that senior film. Yeah, um, in some places, um, I forget his name, but this is guy from the south. He has a studio. He just does all his stuff in studio. He does some outdoor stuff too, but he does a lot of studio shots. He does uh, uh, um, what's the one where you to take the picture of the person and put them in the, in the background? Uh, I forget of the term. Um, I can't. It's in the tip of my tongue. But you take a picture of a person, like you take like a sports picture of a guy on a football helmet, and you put him in front of a football field. field. He does stuff like that. Like, if you have that kind of work, if that's your work that you do and people pay you for that, it's hella worth it. I mean, you know, that's no question. Composites, yeah. If you do composites, that, you know, studios, yeah, super worth it. Ike, what's your background in video? You shoot videos, look really polished. Okay. Ike, what's your background in video? Your, your shoot videos look really polished in detail. You have thought about doing short films or music videos? In addition to your photography, uh, Brandon, I like video a lot, and so I, I I know how to do video, but I don't want to do video for other people. And um, I just I haven't thought about doing a short film just because of laziness, pure laziness. Laziness is the enemy of greatness. I will tell you right now, some of you are great, you just don't know it because you're too lazy. I know I am. Like um, when I look at Peter McKinnon's videos, I'm like, wow, that's really good. I could probably do a lot of the stuff that Peter McKinnon does, but I just don't feel like it. 
<clears throat> it's just too much work. Um, I'm just, I'm just, you know, guys. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's my thing on video. But for me, I just I use my skills for videos to make my YouTube videos a little bit better than like to tend give me a like give me a little you know better like like a, like mm, a little more pizzazz like up the production value um I don't want to shoot music videos and people have asked and I turn them down uh just cuz I, I don't like shooting videos for other people I only like shooting videos for myself <clears throat> it's not laziness it's tiredness that too uh yeah my thing about videos is like it's videos are a lot of work so I like to have fully control over what I'm shooting for video. So I don't like doing videos for other people because then it's their vision and they want stuff to look this way and I and I like it. So, but I might try to get into doing a few more videos um, in the future and adding some more skits for my YouTube channel. Green screen, I'm double exposure, Joe. Yeah, double. I need to learn how to do. Um, Double exposures. Bryce says, what do you and Tosh include in your session price? What creates value to your clients? Prince? Um, we include uh you know what that's funny. I went over this in Ernesto's uh, Ernesto last year. By the way, you guys, let me actually put the uh see if I can link Ernesto's live stream. Because I, I uh, actually answered this question. Me and Ernesto did a business talk. So I'm going to link the uh, video I did with Ernesto here. I'm just waiting for my computer to catch up. I got way too much stuff going on right now. Okay, so I got that up there. Let me get this down. <sighs> Too smart. Say what? What's the next lens you're buying? Um, the next lens that's on my radar um, is maybe a twenty, like a twenty millimeter or a twenty-eight, like a, a ultra wide. I have a thirty-five, a fifty, and an eighty-five. I either want like a longer portrait lens, like a one hundred five, one four. Um, or a super wide lens for weddings and events. Oh, I asked earlier, do you own a bridge cam? What's a bridge camera? I don't even, I don't think I know what that is. Really? Jeez. 
Sorry, you guys, just got distracted by my email. <clears throat> Bridge cam is a point and shoot that looks like a DSLR. Um, no, I don't actually. <clears throat> I don't have a point and shoot camera that looks like a, a DSLR. Brandon Joppa said the 20 millimeter in your last shoot wasn't that yours? No, it wasn't. Um, uh, Brandon, that belongs to Nikon MPS. I have it on loan. Oh, compact and reflex. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I don't. That's a bridge camera is a waste of time to me. Like, I don't, I don't, for me at least, I either want the best quality or I want something small that I can just eat, put, you know, stack away. Um, there's no point in having a bridge for me personally. Are you a believer in f2.8 lenses or are you? <clears throat> Or are you good at four lenses? Hmm. Big difference in price. So I guess the question is, do I believe in 2.8 versus f4 in my opinion? Uh, my opinion is I would always go for 2.8 lenses. The reason being is because uh, I shoot weddings and events. And so I want is I want to be able to get as much light as possible from the lenses. If they made a... Somebody asked me about prime lenses and like what would make me choose a zoom lens over a prime. And the only reason I would choose a zoom over a prime is if they made a 24 to 70, like f2 or f1.8 zoom, I would get rid of my primes to just use that. Until they make that for full frame, I'll just be shooting prime lenses. So I like shallow depth of field, so the 2.8 gives you that. Um, I don't shoot very many long lenses, so I can see going like a 70 to 200 f4, but. <clears throat> 24 to 70, 2.8 all day. What's the one camera setup that you that you would love to have? One camera setup that you would love to have? Uh, I don't understand that question. What's the one camera setup? I don't know if I kind of understand that. Yes, I like when you do the skits in your videos. Make more skits, please. You know, I have to be I have to be more structured. I have to figure out like a structure for um, my videos. I have, to be more, more, I have a great, you guys, I have a great skit that's planned. I'm going to wait for the summertime to do it uh, because that way I'll, I'll, I'll lose some weight and I'll be able to do it outdoors because I, I want to do the shoot outdoors. Um, so I have a really cool skit planned for that, for this big, sh this big shoot that I want to do. It's going to be really funny. <clears throat> It involves making fun of other photographers on YouTube, so I'll just put that out there. I'm reading the comments right now. Too much for me. Blah, blah, blah. Broken these trees. Cliff Martin shoots F4 now. Minota says Cliff Martin shoots F4 now. He probably does, but he probably shoots a D5 too. So he has he shoots a lens or a camera where like he can go up to ISO 12,000, 2 million and be just fine. So... I guess you could shoot at four in that respect. <clears throat> Google Nikon 24 to 120 wedding photography and look for CMP photography. Yep. <clears throat> Eric Rossi in the house. Camera lens and accessories that you would love to have. Okay, so I guess that's the question. If if money was no object and I could have what I wanted today, off the top of my head, it would be a Nikon G850, um, a bunch of lenses, a 5814, a 3514, um, a 8514, a 105.14. A 28.14, a 24.14, one. oh, Jesus, you get the point. It's just too much stuff. I it's, it's, I just love, like, really, I love prime, so I love shooting at shallow aperture and depth of field. And, um, oh, and a 70 to 200, the new 70 to 200 f2.8, the newest one for portraits. Hmm. 
The lottery, yeah. <clears throat> Was it uh, Mondo Schneider says, "How do I get into wedding photography?" Um, offer to shoot some friends' weddings for free, or if you are part of like a, a messaging board on on Facebook, I would like reach out to other photographers to second shoot for for other photographers, and then try to build a portfolio and then try to advertise that way. Brandon Joplin said, I noticed you shoot live view a lot. Would you consider going mirrorless even though they are small? I'm really tempted by the inbound stabilization, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Uh, Brandon, I answered that question earlier, but long story short, um, I would consider going mirrorless if Nikon came out with the new mirrorless camera. That was really great. The only time I really use the, um, the live view, the only time I use live view is um, if I'm trying to get an angle that I can't reach, like if I'm trying to get an upper angle or a down angle. Uh, the only other time I use live view is if I'm shooting at super shallow depth of field, and I want to make sure for sure that what I'm shooting is in focus. Otherwise, um, the mirror works just fine. I have no issues with using the mirror. Are you going to shoot large format film again? That shoot with Shelby's dope. Yes, I do plan on doing more sh film shoots in the future. Uh, for that, I'll wait till it gets light outside because that's more of a natural light thing. You guys, I have so many ideas. Like, I want to do a Polaroid shoot with another photographer um, and do like instant prints where I shoot and like the film instantly comes out. I want to do a shoot like that. I want to do some more film. I want to go behind the scenes and actually show you guys how to develop. Uh, the guy who owns Maston Labs, Kirk Maston, their studio is up in Seattle, um, and I'm cool with them. I have a relationship with them, and so I told him that one day I want to go and shoot a roll of film, uh, get it developed, and actually process the, the so not process, um, scan the film and edit it in their lab on a Fuji Frontier and show what that's like. So that's one of my plans. I had planned to do it this past year, but it fell through, so that's up for next year. That's the plan for next year. Where is somewhere that you have never been that you would love to go to shoot? Um, one of those like exotic, like beaches, like um, what's the girl name? Uh, Anita Stoutik or whatever. If you watch, if you subscribe to her channels, she's like in these tropical places. I would love to go like somewhere out there and do a shoot, like Jamaica or something like that. <clears throat> Hell, Miami. I'd be killing Miami. Actually, I've been to Miami, though. I've been there before. I just wasn't a photographer when I was there, so. Eric says, would you find yourself mixing some film and digital for your wedding work? You know what, Eric? That was always my goal, was to do film and digital. But um, I'm not as confident with film as I am with digital. And so because of that, and because I wasn't married to film... Like, I've done a few weddings where I shot digital and film at the same time, but I did it for myself, not for the couple. Uh, but that was always a thing I wanted to do, and, I'm, and I may eventually try to do it, is uh, you know, shoot hybrid, like shoot film on one camera and digital on the other. But I want to get more confident in shooting film and, and get a better, a better workflow down for film. I don't have the best workflow for film, so um, it might not come across very good. Anita Sadowski, Sadowski, that's what it is. Yeah, she's like she does amazing work. I love her, her shoots with her models and stuff. Like I'm a big fan of hers. Uh, are you doing the Jessica Kobesi challenge? What's the Jessica Kobesi challenge? I don't know what that is. Hi, sir. You, sir, are a beef. You are a beef cake. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, a little beefy. <clears throat> I live in a town of 8,000 people. Whoa. A hundred speak English. Finding a model is like gold dust. Oh, you have blessed. Yeah. Oh, good luck to you, uh, Fordo Latvia. And maybe, maybe reach out into the next town. Like, maybe your town is not popular. Maybe the next town over is. I would, you know do that too. One thing I would recommend the explore page because sometimes the explore page is a mix of people in your hometown 
and people like internationally. So check the explore page too and just reach out. I showed you, I send DMs to people. I'm like, hey, I would love to work with you. Shoot your shot. Like, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If you're working, again, what helps is if you have quality work. If your page is already good and you have good work on your page, you're more, you're more liable to get somebody to shoot with you. If not Facebook, uh, I just joined this group on Facebook where it's called like Seattle Open Shoot, where they do where photographers and models can do collabs. That's another thing I would do is like join a Facebook group or some kind of message board where models and photographers want to get together and collab. Because here's the deal: if you don't have a great portfolio of work, but you want to shoot amazing models, you have to have the work first, then the models become second. So you have to start off with less amazing models make them look amazing and then the better models will come the better shoots will come oh and Eric Rado, Rossi said model mayhem yeah that's model mayhem Eric Instagram is the new model mayhem so forget about model mayhem get on Instagram start sending DMs alright <clears throat> that's just me being funny hi Robert blah 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 David Robert, have you ever seen black people in any Jessica videos? Um, I have hot takes media. Like one, it's rare, but I think I saw one girl who was like super light. She might have been mixed, but you know. <clears throat> oh, one model, three photographers. You know what? I did a bootleg version of that actually. Um, and I'm working on that video. I think that's the next video I'm making. Hot takes, that wasn't my intention to do three photographers, one model. I actually just booked the shoot with a girl and I invited two other photographers to come along. So it it essentially ended up being three photographers shooting one model, but that wasn't the plan. So the structure of the video is not like that. It was just happened to be three photographers shooting one model because I invited some other people out to join me for a shoot. Um, you are the ideal gay man. I appreciate that. His beard is phenomenal. I just got a haircut. That's true. Interested in magazine publication. Um, I've been published in wedding magazines. Uh, as far as like other magazines and wedding magazines, I'm not quite sure because I'm not a fashion photographer and I don't have I don't have um, aspirations or, or dreams of being a fashion photographer. So any kind of publication that I would be want to be that I would want to be featured in would be like a Martha Stewart weddings. Or one of these big wedding magazines. Otherwise, I don't care for all the other stuff. Uh, phony photographers use blow-up dolls. Okay, all right. All right, then. <clears throat> trying to keep up with the uh, comments I'm getting. You have some unnatural white fluff in your beard. Please remove it. Unnatural white. Oh, that's my gray hairs, man. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Would you rather take photos cliff and mountain or just nude women? Which is more appealing to a pro? Cliffs and mountains or nude women? Um. So this is the thing. Like for cliffs and mountains, um, I. I would do that because I live where there's are cliffs and mountains. But my I my like. It's a joke, but my thing would be like is take a bunch of landscape photos and then when I retire from shooting like weddings and stuff, take all those landscape photos and take them to like a swap meet or a, uh, what's the thing, what's the, uh, like a flea market, like a, 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 a market and I'd be that guy who would sell like landscape photos in the market. That's my, that's my plan. That's my retirement goal or sell stock footage. So. You might see me shooting mountains and people like that one day. Mugen says, I don't remember how I came across your channel last month, but glad I did. Can you recommend some YouTubers you follow that are good? I just subscribed to Ernesto Sue. Uh, Mugen, well, thank you for finding my channel, Mugen. You know what? I'll tell you guys a person who I just found who he's actually really dope. And his name is Bro Broly or Broly or whatever it is. B R O, let me let me. B R O O I L Y. Yeah, I think that's his name. But he just started a channel. I just started following him on. Um, I just started following him on Instagram, and I found out he had a YouTube channel. 
And his work is actually really good. Like, for me, to me, his work and how he shoots is, like, goals for me. And I don't even know if it's, like, goal. I just like how he edits. Like, I, I essentially, I could do what he does. Like, it's not hard. I, I can recreate those photos. But he's really good at retouching. And he has really creative ideas. And so I guess that would be my holder would be like coming up with creative ideas in and uh, retouching. <clears throat> robot must be a robot. I'm not sure who robot is. But yeah. Um Eugen Bruley or Brioli. Let me actually find the channel. I'll pull the channel out for you. David Robot put his in. David Robot, are you a, are, do you have a YouTube channel? I don't even know if you do. Do you? Um, also, Mugen, who else? Uh, I like Jessica Kobesi. She's a big photographer, but I like her, her work a lot because um, I like her portraits. Jessica Kobesi, off the top of my head. Manny Ortiz, he does great work. I like Manny Ortiz a lot. He's a little more edgy. <clears throat> uh, so Manny Ortiz. Although, Manny, we got to talk about your, your family photos, man. You got you to gotta get a little bit closer to your subjects. You were quite... You're quite a ways away from your family photos in that 200 F2. I'm going to need you to get a little bit closer. Um, but Manny's good. B the Broly guy. Yeah, too smart. Said, it looks like Broly's a studio guy. Yeah, he is. Um, he is. He, he does a lot of studio stuff. <clears throat> um, Jessica Basie, Anita Sadowski is great. Who else did? And I, I'm trying to think about people who take photos and actually show their photos. Because there are a lot of photographers who, like, I watch for, like, gear stuff. Like, uh, Eric Rossi. Like, I watch Eric's videos because he does, like, you know, perspectives on gear and stuff like that. Frodo's photo. I watch his channels, but he talks about gear as well. If you're trying to learn photography and you want to see people actually shoot, that's what I'm trying to think of. Um, F Stoppers channel. Uh, who else? I can't think of something here. I just, I just had it. You guys help. <laughs> help me out. Crap. Jerry Guiones has a YouTube channel. You know, to, um, who else actually shoots and creates videos? Oh, Irene. Irene Rudnick. She does. Hot Take says, Anita stinks. Why don't you like Anita? I like her work. I'm just trying to catch up on the uh, <clears throat> comments. So, do you plan on getting into drone photography? Um, no, but I do want a drone for my video. So, yeah, that's that's something that might pop up is a drone for adding to my videos. But I'm not... Because drone photography for me is kind of like landscape photography. So, I'm good on that. Oh, Zing Lu. Yeah, he's good too. Uh, Zing La, Lu or Lu or whatever. <clears throat> Hot Takes Media says she's a carbon copy of Jessica. I would disagree with you, um, Hot Takes, because um, Anita does way more studio work than Jessica. And um, she does, like, swimsuit models and stuff like that. Like, I, I, I actually haven't seen any shoots that Anita has done that look like Jessica's shoots. Styling-wise, it may be, like, fashion-wise. Um, but all of Anita's stuff is either in the studio or it's like by a beach in a swimsuit. So that's what I like about Anita. Now, granted, 
they may be in similar, um, what's the term? Similar areas, like how they shoot the looks. But that, that's cool for me because some of my work looks like a lot of other people's works too. So, I mean, that's not a, that's not a big deal for me. <clears throat> ben Horn, eat airbrush. I don't know if I've heard of Ben Horn. But yeah, Zing Lu, he's, he's pretty good too. Actually, but I don't actually watch Zing, Zing Lu's videos anymore. Like, I used to watch him, but now they're kind of like stale because this is the same thing over and over. Like, once you see like two or three of Zing's videos, it's kind of like, it gets kind of boring. Sorry to say. It's like the same thing. It's the same intro. It's the moving video. Then he does the pictures. And then it's, you know, you see the photos. The reason I would watch Zing's videos now would be for inspiration. Like if I need styling ideas or a location for looks, I would watch his video for that. But I don't you don't really I don't learn too much from watching his videos. He's just just if I'm bored, you know, I want to see somebody shoot. Go check out Ben Bond. Oh yeah, yeah, Ben Bond, he's good too. I subscribe to Ben Bond's channel. <clears throat> You know what? Actually, if you guys, if you look at my channel, I show all my subscriptions. So I don't, like, I'm not hiding anything. Um, if you look at my channel, you can see who I'm subscribed to. So if you're curious about who I'm into or, or who interests me, um, if you look on my channel, you can see who I'm subscribed to and all this stuff. And I'll show you guys. Jason Lanier, I watch this stuff sometimes, but I'm not subscribed to Jason Lanier's channel. Because sometimes I like what he does and sometimes I'm like, eh. So I just figured I wouldn't subscribe. And Angry Photographer. I watch, these are two people who I watch their videos every now and then, but I haven't subscribed to. Is Angry Photographer and Jason Lanier. And I have no problem saying like who I'm subscribed to. Like I don't, you guys. My, my whole thing is the realest photographer, oops, time is up, is the realest photographer on YouTube. So, like, <clears throat> and I might be a little bit too real, but, yeah, I don't, like, I got nothing to hide. I'm going to show you guys who I'm subscribed to right now. So these are all my subscriptions, and here I can point out Carlos. He just started a brand new channel. He's pretty cool. He was actually one of the photographers that was with me in the three photographers. Like Carlos was with me, and then Stanley was with me. Uh, I subscribed to Ted, which I don't know if he even shoots, but his voice is really cool. Um, who else is up here? Farrakhan is dope. He does great work. Farron Khan. Farron Khan. I think I pronounced his name wrong. Ben Bond. His Ben. Subscribe to him. These two do some pretty cool stuff. Here's Bro Broly, the Broly guy. So check him out. Um, who else is up here? Blah, 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 yada, 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 Joe Allen. I think he's okay. He does really cool stuff, too. Benjamin Jarowski. Evan Raff, there he is. <clears throat> Jeremy Smith. Peter McKinnon, the big guy. Bryce, Bryce in the building. Check out Bryce's channel, folks. If he ever uploads another video, because this guy be taking forever. <clears throat> Manny. ARX, AR15. AR15 is cool. Tyler Stallman. He does great stuff. Chris Perkle is pretty cool. The Brotographer. Um, Brandon Cole. Who else? Steve Perry's dope. The artifact, he just talks about, I just listen to this guy talk about photography. You don't see too much shooting from him nowadays. 
That One Camera Guy, <clears throat> Max Yuriv, Jack Gaines, The Slanted Lens, Craig Becca, Ian Vox. She's not bad. <clears throat> She's okay. <clears throat> Brittany Broski, Jared Polin, Angela B. Penn, Digital Rev, Miguel Quiles, he's dope. Check him out. Jason Vong's the homie. Michael Smith, if he ever up uploads the video again in the future. Um, Prince Myson, he's dope. He doesn't upload as, as often. Who else? Who else? Kejan Franklin, Anita Sadowska, Matt Granger, Camera Store, Terry White. My own business channel. <laughs> if you want to see old school, if you want to see old school Ike, if you want to see where my beginnings, this is the channel. There's a bunch of old stuff up here. If you're like, how come I don't see Tosh? This is the channel that has Tosh. So Ike and Tosh Photography Motion has a YouTube channel. Um, who else? Locke, Westcott, Eric Rossi in the house, Ernesto Sue, Joe Edelman. Joe Edelman be talking that shit too. He be he be going in. <clears throat> Here's Zing Lu, Eric Kim, Photo Rec, Toby, Kai, Robert Hall, Dale Hoshing, like these are all my, this is here, I won't go through all of them, but if you go through and click on community, you can see the community posts, if you click on channels, um, so that's how you get to see like who I'm, this is who I subscribe to, right? <clears throat> and not everybody on this list are people who I necessarily, I'm trying to learn from. Some of these people, I'm just bored and I want to watch stuff, like... Not everybody is offering educational content. Sometimes I just need to watch, need to watch a video. So, hopefully that gives you guys insight onto like you know what I'm doing or what I'm about. So yeah. Blah, yada, yada, yada. I'm just reading the comments. Evan Raft, yep. <clears throat> Picks and Perfect, he's up there. Oh, come on. Subscribe to that channel. Somebody said, Who's your favorite, though? Um. I don't know if there's a... I don't know if I have a favorite. Like, I don't know if I have an actual favorite. I guess Kai from Digital Rev is my favorite because this video is very entertaining. At this point, like, for me, I'm not learning much of anything on YouTube as opposed to just getting inspiration and watching videos for fun. Like, um, I don't, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, sitting there taking notes when I watch videos. It's, it's not that. I'm past that point, so... <clears throat> <laughs> Hot Take said a lot of these channels don't actually do work. I yeah, I know, I know. I just listen to them talk because I'm bored. Like I, this is how I watch YouTube videos. Okay, I take my iPad and I go in the kitchen and I cook some food or something. Or I'm, if I'm washing the dishes or something, or if I'm cleaning or I'm in the shower and I'm like I want to listen to some noise or I'm in the shower because I don't have cable TV. Like we cut cable, we just have Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. So at this point, um. If I was like actually looking for channels who did work and did like meaningful stuff, I'd be bored. I'd be bored to death. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't be able to listen to anything. So um, some of these channels I subscribe to either a. Here's the deal. Because one, I want to know what's going on. Like I believe in being a part of the community and being aware of what's out there, what people are doing. So I want to be up on game. And two, um, I just don't mind seeing what people are up to. Like you know. 
Eric Ross said, who remembers Don Bauer, right? Don Bauer. <laughs> <clears throat> Eric Ross said, YouTube is my TV. Yeah, so all of these these are all of the channels that you see that I subscribe to. And if I, if I subscribe to a channel, it's because, A, you might be creating content that I might be willing to listen to here, or I feel like you might be on to something. So I might want to, you know, keep tabs on your channel. The reason, the reason is, again, that I don't have Angry Photographer subscribed, even though I watch his videos and I comment on his videos, the reason I haven't subscribed to him is because he... He puts up like a video, or he puts up a um, he puts a video like a, every five seconds, and some of it's nonsense, like it's just a bunch of rambling. And so I just I'd rather not have my feed be full of angry photography videos. So I just go to his channel when I want to hear about him or listen to him. But I have nothing against angry photographer. I just haven't subscribed because I'd rather just get him on demand basis. Uh, Jason Lanier, I haven't. I didn't subscribe to his channel because his work is okay, but I don't know. I don't know why I have. I should just subscribe to it. I'm going to subscribe to his channel right now because I subscribe to everybody else. Like, <clears throat> <clears throat> So I'm going to subscribe to Jason's channel. At first, I was kind of like questionable, like, what's his stuff? Like, what's he on? But he puts out some decent ideas i won't say that his work is anything that like i got i won't jason lanier is not teaching me anything but again like everybody else's channel i just watch it just for you know entertainment purposes so <clears throat> and sometimes i hear stuff i'm like what is this guy talking about oh you know what i won't go there all right because I, I don't want to do my rant but so i won't i won't talk about people because <clears throat> you guys get me <clears throat> You guys get me on my little rants and stuff, and then I get to talking about and talking trash about certain photographers and channels. So I will try not to do that today. Um, but yeah, sometimes I hear Jason talking, and I'm like, "What is he like?" Certain stuff I don't agree with, and I've I hear that a lot of times. So I think that's what kept me from subscribing to his channel uh, before, is because I was just like, "This guy's talking crazy." So, but I won't knock his success. Like he's successful, he gets money, he gets he gets paper. So more power to him for that. Like, for the man, you selling any of your stuff via any of the brokers like Pound Five? Line two, are you talking about my crypto investments? You guys, I just brought some crypto currency, all right? I'm I'm about to join the uh, the crypto gang. I'm about to get my Bitcoins up. <clears throat> Somebody said... Uh, Hey, what's your main camera body right now? And what are you looking at for the future? Uh, I mentioned it before, but my main camera bodies is the D800 and the D750 for two different reasons. Uh, in the future, either a D850, another D750, or whatever mirrorless Nikon comes out with. <clears throat> oh, no, my photo work. Uh, I don't know what Pond 5, I don't sell any of my stuff. Photo work. No, I don't. To answer your question. But yeah, um, back to the whole YouTube community thing. Like I'm very much, I'm very much, I try to, uh, treat people how you want to be treated type of thing. So like, if somebody's like, um, you know, listening to my channel, they feel like I'm full of shit and they don't want to listen to me. Fine, you know, keep it moving. I don't, I don't mind that. But if people like my stuff and want to comment and subscribe, I'm all for that. And I feel like I should do that too. Like as a as a YouTuber now, as somebody who actually makes YouTube videos, I make it a point to try to comment, like people's videos, and leave engagement because it helps the channel. So I figure I would want people to do that to do that for me, so I would do that for them. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Bryson. He said, not kind of dropping on me. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, all right? I'm holding out. <laughs> I'm sitting in this corner holding out for not kind of come through with something. <clears throat> or Cannon, one or the other, to see what they come out with. <clears throat> but yeah, my, uh, my goal for YouTube is... I, I wanted to be one of those YouTube photographer. YouTube photographers, funny, and that's that's what I categorize. I wanted to be a YouTube photographer who who could keep up technically, but also keep up with the work. And so I wanted to be able to compete in both areas, and I wanted to be able to show my work because a lot of you know photographers that you listen to or see, they speak of the game, but you look at their photos and you're like, ugh. So I, I didn't want to be that guy. So I, I'm trying to make sure I stay consistent with um, being able to offer great quality work and teach people like how I would want to be taught and show people things that I would want to see. Like I wish, I wish that all these other YouTubers would tell us like who inspires them, what other channels they did they like. But you probably won't get that. You barely get them going live, like and just talking to people. Like I'm, I'm just very transparent. It's just like what you see is what you get. I don't hold anything back. <clears throat> you guys see me at WPPI. You kind of pretty much know what to expect. Like there is no, I don't have an uh, aura of arrogance around me. I'm confident in my work and what I can do, but I'm not like. And I get messages on Instagram. If you guys DM me, like I, I reply back. Like I just, I'm not on that stuff. <clears throat> David Robot says he's checking out. Um, I got to check out too here soon. It's about 4.25. I'm intermittent fasting. I'm trying to get ready to get in shape for Vegas. I've lost three pounds so far from my last video. So hopefully I'm back in shape when you guys see me. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. Uh, I think I'm good for now. I think I've kind of ran through all my topics. Um, <clears throat> oh, and I was going to go on about the, D6, the 6D Mark II, but I won't even go there because... I was getting frustrated about how everybody was like, oh, the Canon 6D Mark II is so great. I'm like, no, it ain't. Don't lie to me. It's average. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I think I got, I covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, You guys, let me know. If you're watching a rewatch or whatever in the comments, let me know. Would you want me to do these just random discussions like, Every week, every now and then, because I've been wanting, um, I've been wanting to do like talks where I just talk to you guys about stuff. Uh, whether it be, um, whether it be me talking and doing a recorded video, or doing a live stream. I got the idea from uh, Zed Pro Media Lee. He did a video where he talked about doing like these uh, podcasts slash live streams where he talks. And I'll be wanting to do that, too, because I'll be wanting to, like, you guys, when Peter McKinnon made that 60 Mark II video, and then Casey made the 60 Mark II video, and then Frono's Photo made that 60 Mark II video, Mark, Mark II video I, I started getting mad. I started getting tight, all right? Because I'm like, yo, what are these people like? This is, this is, this is a decoy, okay? And I would go and comment on people's things, and I wanted to make a video about it, but I didn't. And so, um... I want to be able to just like have an opportunity to get my thoughts out and talk to you guys about what's going on and cover different topics. And I know everybody else does it too, but so what? So <clears throat> if you guys want to hear stuff like this from me, my opinions on gear and stuff like that, let me know because I can kind of make this a weekly thing. Where I just sit up here and talk to you guys, answer questions, you know, talk shit about other YouTubers, whatever you want. You guys know I'm the one for it. I don't care. <clears throat> Uh, shield for Canon. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, okay? If somebody paid me enough money, I'll be a shield too. I'll be honest. I'll be an honest shield. I'll tell you right in the front. Hey, this is a shield video, so be prepared for the shilling. But that whole like, oh, I got a new camera and it's really cool. And I really think you guys will love it because it has so many cool features. Like I just, I can't do that. That's, and, you know, that'll, that might hold me back, but whatever. <clears throat> Uh, if if that's the case, I'm telling you, this is why I'm doing it because they paid me to. This is a collaboration. These are the good things about this camera. Make your own decision. <clears throat> um, think somebody. Oh, Bryce said one of the photo edit photo edit the the challenges. So Bryce, I'm behind on a few videos. I have to get like two or three videos 
up before that video, so it'll be a while. Um, so, um, and that's probably why I'm not shooting today, because I, I could have had somebody come through today and do a shoot, but I just need to stop shooting. I need to get these videos out, so. <clears throat> Hot Takes Media says they're using it for video. Of course they are. Um, I guess if you want a full frame camera that's for vlogging, that's your only choice. But if you're going to tell me that the Canon <clears throat> 6D Mark II is a better video camera than the 80D, uh, there's some debate. Like Especially for YouTube. For YouTube-wise, uh, <clears throat> AC says the 60 Mark II cra craze is out of control. They, do they want their content sent to time of 4K? Here's my deal, and I'll, 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 this is this will be my like last thing. Um, <laughs> you got might be we can relate. Other than that, watch get that money. Yeah, shill away. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's the deal, right? Um, about shilling and stuff. What I notice is the people who are the most honest. Are the people who get the stuff from BNA? So, for example, Eric Rossi says, you know, he'll get cameras from BNH sent to him. He can be honest about the gear because BNH doesn't care. At least that's my guess. Like BNH wants you to promote BNH, whether you like the gear or not, doesn't matter to BNH. If Canon or Sony sends you the gear, your opinion matters. You have to be a little bit more. Um, you have to be a little bit more selective of how you talk about the camera. If you get a camera sent from Canon or Nikon, but if you get it from Adorama, if Lens Pro to Go or Borrow Lenses sends you a camera for review, you can talk shit about the camera all day because it doesn't make them know. It doesn't matter, you know. So, I would want those kind of collaborations. Like, um, but if Sony said, "Hey, we like what you're doing. Would you review the camera?" I sure would review it, and I would be selective what I say, and I would be winking the entire time. This would be me in the video. So guys, I got this Sony camera that's really great. It has takes four frames per second, and you can use flashes. Like that's me. That's that's I'm gonna try to keep it real in the video at the same time. You know, uh, make that money. <laughs> he said. Plus, brands want to see your edit before the public. Yeah, that's another thing. Like they want to see it. Like get out. <clears throat> you can get gear from B and H two I twenty five. Really? Somebody tell me how do I get gear from B and H? Because uh, <laughs> I want to do I want to do video I want to do gear reviews, but like I gotta pay. Last year, all the stuff I did, I paid for out of my own pocket. The six D, the five D Mark IV, the A nine twice, the D five hundred. Like I paid for those rentals. Which allows me to be more frank because it's coming out of my pocket, which I appreciate that. But if I can get one of these camera rental companies to send me gear for free, I'd rather do that. So I don't have to spend as much money, and I can be, I can make more of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> he says, "Shill or not, there is a way of saying something isn't good professionally, though." Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll contact you, uh, Eric. I'll probably contact you on Twitter because Eric's active on Twitter. Um, what was I gonna say? Crap! I forgot what I, I forgot. You guys, I get to ranting, and I lose track of what I was gonna talk about. Um, oh, 4K. Here's my opinion on 4K, and I'm gonna make a video about it too. Uh, to me, 1080p is the standard. If you have good quality 1080p video, you're good. You don't need 4K. Like most TVs, upconvert 1080p video anyway. My Samsung. 55 inch 4K TV. If I watch any videos from YouTube on my Samsung video, it'll upconvert it as long as it's good quality 4K. So uh, Peter McKinnon's his video shot with his 1D Mark IV, 1D Mark II, 1DX Mark II are decent. Uh, this is guy I follow called John Polson. He has great quality. His videos are really clean and really crisp at 1080p. That to me is the thing. I don't care if it's 1080p as long as it's good quality 1080p. And Canon's 1080p videos tend to be a bit soft for my, my taste. They're not as soft. Uh, Sony has great quality 1080p videos, uh, but the colors are, are, are kind of funny on Sony. They can be. Um, so that's my thing. I don't think that you have to be shooting 4K, 
but you at least have to have a decent 1080p and that the 60 doesn't have it's it's barely okay so uh, that's my thing about 4k but again you would also want to shoot 4k if you can because YouTube has a whole section of 4k videos and somebody like myself like 4k doesn't matter on my iPad or my iPhone but on my television on my Xbox one on uh, PlayStation 4, people actually watch videos on tip on Apple's coming out with an Apple TV 4K. So in the future, 4K will be a thing. So um, my my content that may be evergreen, like if I do a video review of the Nikon D750, that's not going to matter in 10 years. So that doesn't have to be 4K. But if I do a video on how to use a beauty dish, that video will be relevant in 10, 20 years because lighting is going to be light. So videos like that, I would want to shoot in 4K or make sure that they're their best that they, that they can be because I want it to represent me and my channel well in the future. <clears throat> uh, funny enough, 1080p is still a standard. Yeah, most televisions shoot like 720p slash 1080. Like 1080p is still king. Forget what you heard, 1080p is still the king. And with mobile video, 1080p will be relevant for years to come. My only thing is good quality 1080p. Not mushy, not soft, not crappy 1080p. Good, sharp 1080p. Um, so. <laughs> Brian Collin, what's your favorite food? Anything. So yeah, um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Uh, uh, stay tuned for the next video, like sometime next week. Um, close out. <clears throat> stay tuned for that. I got plenty of ideas for the future. I want to do some more camera reviews, some more technical stuff, so I'll figure that out. Um, and yeah, anything else before I, like, any other last minute questions before I, like, sign out? Leasing at bnh.com. I'll look into that. Any wedding videos. Um, I vlogged a wedding video. Uh, I vlogged a wedding December 29th. Uh, I just haven't edited the video. So that, that'll be another one. I have a wedding in two weeks and I have a wedding at the end of the month. So I have two weddings this month scheduled. I don't know if I'll vlog them, but I have two scheduled, so. Okay, Michael Mistro in the house at the last minute, right when I'm about to close out. <laughs> You're going to donate money when I'm at the end of my stream. Like, I might stay on like 30 minutes now. <clears throat> Working on it tonight and tomorrow about my favorite lighting setup. Yeah, that's good, Bryce. Do some more. Put up some more content, man. <clears throat> but, yeah, um, since that's it, thank you, Michael Mistro, for joining into the chat. I don't know if you just joined into the last minute, but I appreciate your contribution. Uh, to the funds, very much so. Um, <clears throat> you haven't actually owned any camos, not Bob. <clears throat> yeah, right, no. <clears throat> Mine, Fire Tech says, do you actually own any cameras, not borrow from wife or alone or from a friend or rented? Uh, I do. I own a deed. So between my wife and I, my wife owns the 750. I own a deed 100. If you've ever been married, you know how that works, which yours is mine and all that good stuff. Um, and then I have some old film cameras, so I answer that question. Anyways. All right. Um, oh, were you the main shooter when you vlogged that wedding? Yeah, I'm the main shooter in all my weddings. Uh, yeah, so. It, I'll, I'll tell you I'm second shooting if I'm not, so. So, yeah, I guess uh, that's it. Chat's kind of drying down, so... Uh, Thank you guys for joining the live stream. Uh, if you guys want to see me do this again, let me know in the comments. Or <clears throat> if you want this to be a weekly thing or what I should do to kind of like get my thoughts out. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys and enjoy your day. Hopefully, 
if you guys were bored and had nothing to do, this kept you somebody entertained. Because on the weekends, I have nothing to do if I'm not shooting a wedding this time of the year because it's a slow season. So I'd be sitting around wishing somebody uploads a video on YouTube. So, yeah. Anyways, all right, folks. Thank you for joining the live. Leave me some feedback. If you disagree, agree in the comments. If you're watching the rewatch um, and all that good stuff. All right, Mario. Brian, Bryce, DMAC, Eric, Manny, who joined in. Um, who else? Notes for Life. Uh, who else? Mugen, Hot Takes, EW, Too Smart, David Robot, DGB. Appreciate you guys for joining my stream and uh, keep me entertained. All right, folks. Oh, wait. Let me close out. No. Do it again? Okay, cool. Two screens. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the weekends be so dry. I'd be like, can somebody upload a video, please? I just need to watch somebody take some photos. No, not that video. Next video. All right, guys. <laughs>